Um, switching gears here, uh, remember May 6th, the Dow plunged 1,000 points, erased a trillion dollars of value in less than 10 minutes. An unforgettable day. A new system of circuit breakers is supposed to keep such a flash crash from ever happening again, but the question is, will it? Our next guest believes that we are doomed for many more flash crashes. He went on the record on 60 Minutes on Sunday, criticizing the use of these computer-driven flash trades. Joining us now for a first on CNBC interview is Themis Trading co-head of Equity Trading, Joseph Saluzzi. Joe, it is a, a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, thanks for having me. And I'm sure everybody in this Wall Street community has seen the 60 Minutes piece. You make a lot of great points, but when it comes to the flash crash, none of the things that you dislike about high-frequency trading actually caused the flash crash. Well, I mean, it's interesting. We can break down their report. We probably don't have enough time to break down their report. But let me just say first say that, listen, we're not anti-high-frequency trading. I'm not anti-value traders. We're not anti-momentum guys. What we have a problem with is the market structure as is. The piece that the CFTC, SEC put out blamed one trade, okay, one algorithm. We looked at it day one. We said, no, that wasn't the case. And if you start to look at the details, 75,000 contracts at 9% really isn't a big trade. And in fact, 35,000 all that traded during the market while it was going down. And 17,000 were on hits, 18,000 were on takes. So let's be real here. What happened was the algorithm itself was taken advantage of by other players in the system. That's the way it works. That's the way it works all day. Okay, that's why we had issues with high frequency traders, but it's really the system that allows it. They're not doing anything wrong, nothing illegal, folks. I know there's nothing there. The capitalists taking advantage of a system which is broken. That's where we have a real problem. In your view, though, how do we, what does fixed mean? I mean, what does leveling the playing field mean? I mean, haven't there been these imbalance? And I'm not trying to defend anybody on Wall Street. I'm simply trying to take the other side of this Absolutely. trade, so to speak. Uh, but it, there have always been imbalances in terms of advantages and disadvantages in trading ever since Absolutely. trading began. Look, trading is predatory by nature. We all know that. Okay, we're all in the game. But the problem problem is when the exchanges are there supposedly as a utility function to protect the investors have now turned into for-profit entities who now no longer care necessarily about listings because most of their money is coming from data feeds, co-location and all different types of services, market data revenue. Their incentives are now twisted. Are we in a capital raising market, which is what the equity market is supposed to be to help small companies turn into big companies, or are we just in a casino where everyone's trying to shave a few pennies at a couple of hyper speed, you know, hyper second things? Hey, it, there's okay. It, there's room for all types of players. But the problem now is it's being dominated by the hyper short term traders. We need to get the ecosystem back in balance to make sure that the prices that you see out there are correct. Joe Stock today, J O E. Right. I mean, what happens there? Okay, Einhorn speaks. That's a big deal. But should it really drop 10% that quickly? Should, is what's going on during that churn during the day just rebate trading, kind of going back and yeah, forth? Yeah, but Joe, Joe, the whole problem is if, if, it, if there's a buyer out here, then Maybe it doesn't drop 10% or 5% that quickly. Well, you and I both know the market structure is that there's 40 different market participants now calling themselves exchanges. So it's not the guys that were here first. It's the guys that were here at the latter part of the day. But how do you get the genie back in the bottle? How does the SEC solve that problem? Well, well I don't think you do. I mean, that is, a lot of our critics will say you can't put the genie back in the bottle. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. But we agree. You could stop. It, uh, basically approving all these new exchanges. What happened was we had two basic exchanges, NASDAQ and New York, right? And Reg NMS came out and broke that glass and said, now we've got 10 exchanges. We've got 40 dark pools. Rather than trying to say, hey, this fragmentation is too much, let's put the glass back together a little, they take the pieces of broken glass and they break them again. Let's make another exchange, NASDAQ PXS. Let's make another one here. And let's put 46 dark pools so that we have this fragmentation so that we create these arbitrage opportunities, which may or may not have existed had you not had the fragmentation in the first place. That's the problem. Okay. Last question here because we're out of time, unfortunately. But what is the one thing that actually keeps you up at night when it comes to the market structure? I mean, there are plenty of things wrong with this market, but what's the one thing as somebody who runs block trades, you know, on behalf of institutional investors that worries you? Uh, well, May 6 could happen again. It could happen tomorrow the next day. There's nothing to prevent it. And I saw Bob Greifel's comment saying that he couldn't. I disagree. We disagree because there are really no set things. There are band-aids being put on place. You really need an overhaul. You need to take a look at the entire thing, but you have to be careful of unintended consequences. We know that. All right, Joe, great conversation. I hope you'll come back to Fast Money we'll do. sometime soon. Thank great. You. Joe Salusi. Uh, Got to take a break. More half number.